Hi, my name is Haley, and today we are going to be making a kumihimo bracelet. And I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's basically a type of friendship bracelet. It ends up being round and kind of spiraled, and you make it on one of these like circular wheels. So to start out, what we're going to need for this project is some cardboard. This was like a mailing envelope, so I glued two pieces together to make it a little bit sturdier. I'm going to need scissors a ruler and a pencil to kind of help draw out the circle, and then some like friendship bracelet string, or it's also called floss. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a ruler and we're going to create a circle with a radius of three inches. So I'm just going to draw the point from the center of my circle, and then I'm going to measure out three inches from that point in all directions and just make a whole bunch of little marks. So as you can see, I just made all my marks. They're in the shape of a circle. Now you're just gonna connect the dots. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you're nervous about your circle drawing, you can do more dots. And that will make it easier for you to connect all of them. But I'm just gonna kinda go for it. And there's my circle. So from there, we're gonna cut that out. So as you can see, I just cut out my circle. Here it is, the second point. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be circular as in a general sense. So now we need to create 32 like cuts along the edge of the circle. I start out by going the four corners and then I'll divide that in half. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect, just do your best. So that's eight. Now we're going to go for 16 by splitting all those, and now we have 16, and if we go in a half one more time, we'll have yet 32. So these lines are just about one centimeter long, maybe a little shorter. They don't need to be super deep, but they're basically just going to be the slots that you use to hold your strings as you're making the bracelet. So there's 32 lines. So now from there, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna cut each of these lines. And you can use your scissors to kind of line them up. You want them like generally facing the center of your circle. So I just went around the circle and I cut all of these little lines. So this is a step that you could do before cutting or after cutting, it doesn't really matter, but you're just gonna go around and number all of these little lines all the way up to 32. So I went through and I numbered all of my little lines. Um, the numbers really just help you kind of keep the direction in which you're going around the circle and then so like if you set it down and you come back you know that you always go increasing. Um, in this case clockwise, it doesn't really matter, it could be counterclockwise. Um, but it's just kind of a way and it'll make it easier to follow along when we start making the bracelet. So the last step to finish our wheel is to put a hole in the center. I do this by just using a cheap pen and just kind of drawing and pressing the circle and kind of wiggling it back and forth until you create a little indent and then eventually just kind of poke it through like that. And from there, you just kind of widen the hole so your bracelet's going to need to pass through the hole, like you can see on this one, the bracelet like actually comes out the bottom through the hole. So once you have a hole like that, you can go with your scissors and you can just kind of widen it a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you know, just do your best. I usually cut kind of an X. and then just kind of bend these and you can cut them off if you want to like you know make it look a little bit more finished or you can just leave them folded back like that so that is how we create our wheel um, these wheels also are like sold and they're usually made out of like foam because the cardboard if you bend it too much it like doesn't hold its shape but it's a pretty easy, pretty quick like thing to make, so if you only use it for 
Like I'd say you could probably use it for something like five to maybe 10 bracelets if you're gentle with it. And it's pretty cheap, it's just cardboard. But that's how you would make the wheel. From there, we get our string. So for this project, I'm going to be using, I'm gonna be doing the same setup I used for this one, where I have four pairs of two strings. This one should actually be down here. But four pairs of two strings. So when doing this, I'm going to use four colors. So I'm thinking I'm using these, and we'll do that one. From there, you're gonna measure out your string length. Your string length should be, I usually do about three times the length of my forearm. I find that gives me about my wrist length. So, you know, that's just how I measure it. Of course, like, you know, if your first bracelet comes out too short, you can always try again. These don't take quite as long as other um, friendship bracelets, so I find you can usually get through them fairly quickly. So I'm gonna cut. So that is my first piece. So now I'm gonna go and measure these three and cut the same length of string. So I just finished cutting my four pieces of string. Uh, hopefully the colors are different enough that you can tell them, like which one is going where. Uh, if you're curious, this is about like just under three feet and it makes a bracelet that's about six inches long. So keep that in mind if you're knowing what you want to use the bracelet for. You can measure your wrist or your ankle and backtrack. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to tie a knot at the end to keep all the strings together. So I tend to use this loop when I'm like tying this bracelet on to like either myself or you know friends. So I like to leave it big enough that I can kind of bait my finger through it but not like huge. So I'd say that's probably good. So from there we're going to put the knot through the loop. What I usually do is I try to hold it between my two fingers on the bottom side just so that it's not moving all over the place. Um, it's kind of hard to get a good grip on it, so just do your best. So I start by putting the strings in a cross shape pattern like this. So I'm going to go green at the bottom. And it doesn't matter the exact numbers you put them on, but you just want them to be kind of like across from each other. And then so this bracelet's kind of cool because this, down. this bracelet's kind of cool because there's a whole bunch of patterns for these Kihimo bracelets online that can create like really cool like designs on like the spiral. So like, you know, people do hearts and they do stripes and they do like, you know, like ridged spirals. And I don't know, I just find it really interesting. So the other thing to keep in mind with this bracelet is that the bottoms tend to get tangled. So every once in a while, just kind of run your fingers through the strings to make sure that they're nice and straight and not tangled. So mine's a little off center, that's okay. Like, you know, you can kind of adjust it a little bit if you want it to be more on center, but it really doesn't matter and you can kind of adjust it as you go. So the first step is to, you're always gonna go lower number to higher number, but you know, it goes around a circle. So 32 and then one. So I would take 15 low number and I go straight across to one. I take 31 and I'm gonna go to 17 because 16, 17. So once I do this way, I'm gonna go to the other cross. So I go seven and I'm gonna go 26. 24 goes to nine. So as you can see, my strings are already getting a little twisted. Just kind of run your fingers through them, detangle them. If you do it every once in a while, it never really gets that bad. And basically that's it. You just kind of keep going. Low to high. You just always want to keep yourself working in the same direction around the circle. So you're always going to keep going this way. And then after you do that for a little while, you can start to see the bracelet showing. So I'm gonna keep going like this. And so this is with, I would call it like four quadrants almost. So if you were, for some of the designs like online, 
you use six quadrants or eight quadrants and basically what you would do is you would do the center then you would go next 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 and then go back so basically you just work your way around the circle again the big thing with these bracelets is just consistency so like you know if you go counterclockwise that's okay as long as you keep going counterclockwise or you know if you do something different just keep doing that because otherwise it can get kind of confusing. So the nice thing about these bracelets is you can really just set this down. It doesn't lose its place at all. And then you can always just pick it back up. The way to tell which direction you did last is if you look real closely, see how the blue string is on top here and the green string is on there? So that means I need to do these orange and yellows next. So I go orange string, 13, 14, yellow string, from 30 to 31. And just kind of keep going. So I've just been kind of doing it for like five, maybe 10 minutes. And you can start to see the bracelet showing up. And again, like as you do it more, you get faster. So like, you know, don't be discouraged if it takes you a while in the beginning. So I did the orange yellow pair last because orange and yellow are on top. So I'm gonna go to the green blue, low to high, low to high. When I say low, I mean it's like the lower of the two also. So like six is lower than seven, 23 is lower than, or is higher than 22. I tend to spin the wheel just as I go. I kind of just go in a circle, but that's a personal preference. Yeah, you just keep going. So here is my other one and I will finish both of these and these will be the finished products. I hope that makes sense and of course when you get to the end just group all the strings together and tie a knot the same way we did at the top and there you have it.